The Oklahoma House this week passed bills designed to overhaul the Oklahoma Public Employees Retirement System and begin a process to increase pay for some state employees. But lawmakers concede finding the money for pay raises will be difficult, leaving the future of both measures uncertain. State Representative Randy McDaniel's bill, changing the largest of the state's pension systems, won approval after more than an hour of heated debate. The bill would replace the defined benefits plan with a 401k style defined contribution system. McDaniel argues changes are needed to address unfunded liabilities of more than $11 billion in the state's seven pension systems. What we're currently doing is not working for the taxpayers of Oklahoma. Last year, we spent $823 million on paying for the cost associated with the unfunded liabilities. McDaniel says that's money that could have been used to repair the capital, finish construction on the Native American Cultural Center, or to upgrade the state medical examiner's office. But House Minority Leader Scott Inman argues it's a bad deal for new state employees who would no longer receive a guaranteed benefit upon retirement. We're going to give those people less money and tip our cap to them and say, but we made life, we made the pension system more sustainable. No, you're not. You're just putting the screws to state employees. Inman also cited outside influences, which he claims are lobbying for passage of the measure because they stand to gain from fees associated with 401k plans. But the individual pushing this legislation around the country is the former Enron executive, John Arnold, who's spending millions to take pension systems like ours that are on their way to be fully funded and instead put them into the hands of the wolves of Wall Street. There's no new money managers. They've had nothing to do with any drafting of this bill. They've never supported me in any way other than I think they've hired a couple lobbyists that are out there supporting sustainable so solutions to major problems in America. Opponents also argue the measure would leave state employees with less money for their retirement. Representative Emily Virgin says a study done last year showed state employees are making, on average, about 20 percent below what they could earn in the private sector. But they accepted that because they got the defined benefit plan. And they say that retention will go down and people choosing to go into the public sector will go down because we're lowering the standard of their retirement. McDaniel countered that changing the state's pension system will help to address pay disparities. The most straightforward way to have long-term pay raises or tax cuts or infrastructure improvements is not to have a pension system that is costing us $823 million a year to service the unfunded liabilities of past obligations. A consultant hired by the Office of Management and Enterprise Services to study employee compensation told lawmakers last year that state employee Sal salaries measures. should be increased before any change is made in their benefits. Quote. Organizations such as the Oklahoma Public Employees Association and the AFL-CIO have voiced opposition to overhauling the pension system until lawmakers pass a pay increase plan. Oklahoma AFL-CIO President Jimmy Curry. I find the 401k pension bill totally reasonable and it's not a good fit for our state employees. Even if they got to raise, I'd still be opposed to the pension bill. That opposition is what ultimately led to House Bill 3293, a companion measure to McDaniel's bill. Representative Leslie Osborne is the bill's author. This is a bill that would revamp and change the way we pay state employees. It has a request in it which we cannot rely on 100 percent, but it requests a 3 percent bump from what everybody received last year, which would be about a $40 million pay raise targeted to our worst compensated employees, such as Corrections, Department of Human Services, and Public Safety. The Office of Management and Enterprise Services would be responsible for allocating money for pay raises, and a spokesman says details on which state employees would get a raise and how much won't be worked out until funding issues are resolved. With the state facing a $188 million shortfall from last year's budget, Osborne admits finding money for salary increases will be difficult. But there's always a way to find the money if you want to. The governor has also mentioned sweeping some uh, a percentage out of revolving funds that have gotten much larger than they were in the past history of several agencies. Those kind of things free up dollars. We have the Senate has voted on taking $40 million out of the unclaimed property fund to use for the... Um, 
Native American Cultural Center. You know, maybe the House would like to see a different use of that money. Osborne says the House Republican Caucus wants to avoid the perception that benefits such as retirement were being cut before pay increases were addressed. So the caucus voiced the plan that what they would like to do is tie them together, run them back to back, strike the title off both, which means that they have to go all the way to the end of session before we make a decision, and see that we do actually fund employee pay raises before we send that pension bill to the governor's desk. Sean Wallace is executive director of Oklahoma Corrections Professionals. Wallace says his group isn't convinced pay raises are imminent. I'm not hearing much positive news on the pay bill actually happening. And the pay bill requires $40 million, and there, there's, um, they don't know where that money is going to come from to provide a pay raise. Wallace also questions whether the House is serious about raising salaries. It seemed like a, a maneuver done just to get the pension bill through. Corrections worker James Croft admits it's hard to keep waiting for a salary increase. You know, we've gone eight years without a pay raise, and, we, and they keep saying, well, maybe next year, maybe next year. Uh, let's do a study on it, and we'll tell you what happens next year, right? Well, this is the next year. Osborne says lawmakers probably won't know whether money is there for pay raises until near the end of the session in May, and her bill makes pay raises contingent on money being available.